Hello and welcome exiles to my guide to righteous fire leveling step by step, act by act. Now, I decided what I was going to do is I was going to go through each act and I was going to write down the items I equipped, the skill gems I thought worked, and then break it down for you in each act pretty much. So right now I just did act one and I'm going to go through the steps I went through when I was setting up this character, the changes I made to gem link, stuff like that, because I think it'll be a nice process to follow on league start so you can't I don't know, catch me streaming or whatever, and you want a good idea of what items to go for, when to get gem links, etc. I basically just wrote down the steps I took while doing Act 1. I went through, I killed Hillock, and then I got Spark from Nessa. I tried out some different skills. Stormblast Mine is supposedly like the meta, but I just don't like it. I don't like playing with it. Spark is chill. Um, and then I went through and I went through the steps of going to Coast, collect the quest items on Mud Flats, get to the Submerged Passage, and then go back to the Coast, and then to Tidal Island to get our Quicksilver when we kill Hailrake. Once we get to town, then I do multiple steps in terms of getting some gem link set up, which you can read through yourself, and then basically going through Act 1, killing Brutus, getting Vitality. Each step tells you the process I'm going to take when I do this on League Start, and will give you a good idea of when I need to get what gem links and where I get them from, like I have, for example, hey, you get these gem links from quest rewards, so that way you know not to buy them from the vendor, because you're going to get them as a quest reward once you do the steps before that. So... That's how I'm breaking this down, and I'm gonna do it act by act. I should have done a recording for my initial setup with Spark, but I kind of forgot to. So for right now, I'm just gonna show you what it looks like currently with the character. We just killed Merveil with Flame Wall and Fire Trap, and I'm probably gonna level with this sort of setup until uh, we get to our first lab. Once we do our first lab, I think we can switch into Righteous Fire, but I'll just give you a demonstration of what this looks like currently with our current setup. and. Mostly what I'm doing is I'm just kind of throwing down flame walls, fire traps, and just moving along. Like, I'm not I'm not spending a lot of time for each pack. I don't really know how to level super efficiently, but it's something along these lines if you just throw stuff down and then you move on uh, type of thing. And this is pretty much what we're going to be doing throughout the leveling, I guess, process. Um, and as we do that, these are the gem links we're going with, and then I will... Go through Act 2, I'll figure out what other gem links, other supports we pick up throughout Act 2. I'll write them down and I'll give you guys an update once I finish Act 2. And we'll go from there. See you in Act 2, or at the end of Act 2 at least. From the future, I'm just about to finish Act 2. Nothing really changed much. Our gear is still really bad. I guess we got a little bit better wand, but everything else is all very bad. And uh, we added Skitterbots. We also picked up some support gems, which we're now leveling in our offhand, which are Controlled Destruction and Elemental Focus. So not a lot happened in Act 2, mostly just running through the, the normal quest line. And I figured I would show you guys what you can expect with this kind of setup as we go into Val Oversoul. I don't think it's really OP, but it seems like it's been fine. I mean, I did the Spider in a reasonable time. I did... The other bandit fights they didn't seem like they're particularly difficult or anything um i apologize for a lot of this recording i'm probably gonna sound sick because i am a little bit sick hopefully i get out from under the weather before um before uh league launch that would be ideal i don't want to be this sick for league launch personally And basically what we're doing when we're fighting bosses is we're just putting fire trap and flame wall on them. They're duration skills, so you don't really have to spam them. I'm spamming them a little bit just because, I don't know, it's habit or whatever, but just as long as you're key, like throwing a fire trap every two seconds, you should have permanent uptime on it. And then flame wall, you can see when it goes down because there's not fire on the screen, but I recast it a lot just out of habit. Um, this isn't necessarily a playstyle I like. I definitely like Righteous Fire way more, so I'm gonna be super happy <laughs> when I get to lab and I can swap into our Righteous Fire. But uh, looks like we did Val Oversoul, and I guess he just had three immunity phases if we're gonna finish him off here before he goes down for his next one, which we did. So that's what it looks like with, you know, I'm not very good at gearing my character. This is all pretty bad gear, obviously. Um, and then I will fast forward to through Act 3. And I might even fast forward all the way to doing a lab, potentially, if we don't change much with this gear. Otherwise, we'll just maybe do a Dominus fight next. See you there. Welcome to the lab. We're going to get our first lab ascendancy, and I think at this point we'll be able to switch into Righteous Fire. I kind of forgot to record Killing Dominus because it was so smooth and easy. It really wasn't it really wasn't that big of a deal. It was actually pretty chill. And so I'm just going to show you guys what, uh, what this looks like right now. We're just basically 
flame wall, fire trap, and then we'll curse him with flame ability if that goes down. I have, at this point, dropped Orb of Storms, Frost Bomb, stuff like that. Doesn't really have a place in this build. It's just kind of early, early damage and speed. And now we got a bunch of rares. We're going to go ahead and get this Ascendancy, and then I'll swap over to when I've actually swapped into Righteous Fire and what it looks like. Welcome to the Righteous Fire Switch. So we completed Lab. We are a level 35 character, and this is our tree right now. This is what it looks like when we're switching into Righteous Fire. How can we do it so early? And it's with something that I actually decided to use, which I think was a, a good play, which is Survival Secrets. This means our Life Flasks gain charges when we're not using them. Generally, the Life Flasks last a pretty short amount of time. And if I have multiple Life Flasks, that means when I'm using Life Flask number one, number two, and three are generating charges. And thus, we can sustain our Life Flasks and always have them to proc when we need them to boost our life pool, life total back up. This is going to be when we are at our weakest in terms of sustain for Righteous Fire for the character, and we can still sustain it. Not by a lot, but by enough, and it's gonna feel good while leveling. So let me give you a demonstration of what it looks like for the character right now as we start with Righteous Fire. So if I were to press Righteous Fire, and I wasn't going to use a Life Flask, currently we're in the five seconds of not taking damage over time, now we're taking damage over time. Now when I press a Life Flask, it will basically nullify the Righteous Fire degen. It is the difference between our net regen or our life regen and how much degen we're taking. So if I press this, obviously I should be pressing it before we, I get to half health, but I'm not really paying attention to it right now. I'm just trying to show you what it looks like. And you can see I'm getting these life flasks back, obviously, as I switch between one and the other. When I use the weaker life flask, the giant one, for example, this one doesn't quite sustain as well as the others. You can see we're still degening. Definitely upgrade your life flasks as you get better ones as you go. But this kind of showcases how we can stay sustain, how we can sustain righteous fire at such an early level. There are things we don't have yet. We have a purity of fire that doesn't give us any maximum resistances. We have vitality level seven. That's kind of just okay. We have stone golem all the way at level one. Obviously, as we level these things up, we're gonna get more flat life regen. We don't have any life regen on our gear. Our tree only has a little bit of life regen here. We're clearly at the bare minimum in terms of our sustain. So it's only gonna get better from here. And I just wanted to show you guys what running through a calms zone would look like. We have a three link righteous fire and it's definitely enough damage to just run through monsters, feel good about it, and they just die. Um, which this is what you love about righteous fire. It's, it's the quality of life. It's the I'm just moving through the zone and things are dying around me as I go type of play style. Um, obviously we can still use our flame traps or fi not flame traps, fire traps whenever we get to like, I don't know, tankier monsters, whatever that might be, rares or bosses. But for the time being, we can pretty much just run through. It'll kill normal monsters and you'll say, hey Lance, why is our AOE so small? For example, Righteous Fire starts at a very small radius and it gets higher radius as you level up. I think the difference in a level one righteous fire and like a level 21 righteous fire is like plus five radius which is quite a bit and we also don't have all the aoe we're going to get in our tree we're about to grab aoe nodes in the witch area and we're going to be grabbing aoe nodes pretty soon in i don't know if it's called fiery impacts but it's a node in between templar and witch and then eventually we'll get even more aoe nodes all the way in templar but that's just as we level up we'll get higher gem levels more aoe We'll get percent AOE on the tree. Stuff like that's going to improve it. Eventually, we could maybe even get an increased AOE gem link, but that wouldn't be until we get more of like a six link Righteous Fire. I typically don't like using uh, just ink AOE as a link because it's not giving us any damage. And early on, when you only have a three link, you definitely want to use Ellie Focus. You definitely want to use Burning Damage. You want to use the better links when you have so little links to choose from type of thing. Uh, so... This is what it looks like, and we'll be cruising like this all the way up until <laughs> the end game, basically. My plan is we'll be life-based for a significant portion of the character. I want to get to a point where we can take on end game bosses consistently. I think farming Syrian Exarch or Edo of Rolls will be very good currency this league because of how many builds want to use Ashes of the Stars, because of how many builds want to use Omniscience. Those items are going to come at a premium early in league, and I think this character will very easily do those fights, uh, you know, with just a little bit of gear. So I think we'll be able to farm that content, we'll be able to sell those amulets, we'll be able to make a pretty penny doing it, and then we'll be able to work our way towards, obviously, the energy shield gear, because we really want to do that sort of thing. 
So I just wanted to go all the way through this just to give you a showcase. This is what leveling looks like. It's smooth, it's chill. We're not exactly worried about dying to Righteous Fire. We clearly haven't come in much danger fighting monsters. Our current um, auras and stuff, it's not what we want it to be. We're gonna get some aura nodes that's gonna help us fix our reservation space and then we'll be able to get determination and a purity of fire that actually has max rise, stuff like that. All is going to improve our survivability. Eventually, we'll get an early unique like Rise of the Phoenix. That's going to be max fire as that's going to make our sustain better. Currently, using life flasks to fix our sustain is only for leveling. Eventually, we will get to the point where we just over sustain Righteous Fire by a good amount. But since we're so early on and we don't have hardly any regen on our tree, we don't have any regen on our gear, clearly we're going to have a rough time. And that's why we're using this flask tech to make leveling work. And... Uh, Besides, it's just so much funner to run Righteous Fire in terms of leveling when compared to something like else. When I was using Flame Wall and I was using just Fire Trap to clear, I mean, it worked, but this is just so much smoother. It feels so much better playstyle. I was just running for, I mean, granted, I could stop to kill this rare and stuff, but like everything else besides rares just dies so quickly that we just keep to run through and keep moving. And then as we get more AoE, it's going to feel even better. So I'll give you a quick look at what the damage looks like on um on calm right here if i could uh press my life for us correctly so that's what calm looks like at this stage of the character when we're just level 36 now well we were 35 but we leveled up um so hopefully that gives you a good idea of this stage of the character i'll quickly go over the gear to show you guys what it looks like on the rf switch obviously i don't have anything super good here I just kind of have potato rares that I've picked up while leveling. Nothing really that good per se. Nothing's overpowered or very good. Obviously, while I was leveling, I actually dropped a Chaos Orb. Something you want to do when you get your first Chaos Orb is try to get a Pyre Ring. Try to get... Um, I think there's a Amulet that has a decent amount of life and maybe some Fire Damage. I forget what it's called. Um, you you want to be searching for some early upgrades whenever you get currency to try to get them things like pyre rings make the build so much stronger in leveling because you get so much extra damage from it stuff like that keep your eye out for so i will catch you in future acts as we make changes to the character see you then all right next update we are now in innocence i would like to say our sustains actually improved quite a bit upgrading from sacred from colossal is actually a pretty big improvement you'll see now when Ever I get damaged down from me not responding to Righteous Fire right away, we actually get the life back uh, much more effectively than we did before. That's a big improvement. And then I think the damage is also improved as well. That was, It's pretty clean in terms of how fast we are killing monsters at this point, I would say. Um, so already Act 5, even though we haven't really actually got that many new passives per se, I believe our characters improved quite significantly. So obviously things like getting better life flasks those are pretty important upgrades for the time being as we progress the character and then obviously as we get max res like we just got our first max res on our period of fire things like that are going to be crazy for our sustain things like getting rise of the phoenix will be massive upgrades those those will be items we won't get until 60 or whatever we can equip them they'll be like really cheap and affordable but they will be impactful nonetheless and feel very good when we do them so this is just me trying to give i guess update showcase of how this character is progressing throughout the campaign and i guess innocence really doesn't like my stone golem um works for us i guess we just don't have to dodge him at that point um but yeah just wanted to say you know act four it definitely felt like we were on the edge we were on the edge of survival but by the end of act four i picked up some sacred life flasks and then going into act five it's been honestly quite smooth i would say so that's kind of the change you should be expecting. Make sure to prioritize getting those better life flasks. And then of course, you know, getting things like leveling up Purity of Fire, getting an extra max res, stuff like that goes a long way. So that was the Innocence fight. I'll take, uh, I guess, some time to get farther in the X and show you some more updated progress. So I just remembered right before doing this, we're in Cruel Lab, showcase what it looks like for doing uh, this part of the thing and probably shouldn't have tanked that. That was kind of stupid on my part, but uh, Needless to say, we did Cruel at level 52 right after we got basically through all of Act 7 all the way up to where we're about to go fight and fight the final boss. Now, I wanted to give a showcase of currently this character, what it will look like when we start degenning before we get this Cruel Lab, the difference it makes. Obviously, we're going down, then we get the 
the condition that's met where it says, hey, five seconds, now you don't take damage for that amount of time. Now we go back down, you see we're draining life. And this is something we have to mitigate while we're mapping currently. We have to press, or while we're playing the game, we have to press life flasks. We have to conscientiously do it, yada, yada, yada. And I will show the difference of when we get patient reaper, this basically means while we're mapping, we don't really have to worry about it. It takes away all that sort of concern, so to speak. Um, I guess we'll have reduced mana cost if we've been hit recently. I don't freaking know. Um, we've got maybe a couple gear upgrades. I don't know. We've got a little bit better shield. Our gear's still all just whatever. I'm planning to get through basically all the axe on just a three link righteous fire and four link um, fire trap. These aren't optimal. These are just basically we're getting through the axe. We don't have a lot of jewel jewelers or we don't have a lot of fusings. We might not drop the four links we want. Yada, yada, yada. Moral of the story is... As you get currency like Chaos Orbs, you're going to want to buy um, things like Pyre Rings, things like Death Rush Ring, things like an Ambush Charge, that's a 5 link. Stuff like that's going to be cheap, and it's going to allow you to progress your links and stuff like that quite significantly. Anyways, I wanted to give a real quick breakdown showcase of, hey, this is how much different it looks to fight enemies, uh, and Righteous Fire is taking care of itself a lot more, and there's a lot less babying uh, I have to do personally in terms of making sure I'm pressing my life last to stay alive and we're going to be moving and progressing away from that as we continue to get gear on the character so right now would be a time when we're degening right but we're getting kills and we're sustaining via our kills alone and that extra recovery rate so that's kind of the cool thing where and, and we're not it, this is a multiplier in terms of recovery rate it multiplies how much we're recovering we're still at a pretty weak state in terms of our percent regen per second or whatever or percent life regen per second and we're going to get more gear and more things that give flat regen etc and this will of course get better as we go so i just wanted to give you guys this sort of outline this is what you should expect once you get the second lab you don't have to worry about pressing life flasks while mapping. You get to just enjoy zooming around, running through monsters. And of course, Trickster comes with some nice attack and cast speed every time you level. So you're going to get faster as you get these ascendancies. So I'll probably do another one of these and update once we get to like Act 8 bosses. See you then. Approaching our Act 8 finish. Um, it's been really clean. I'm not going to lie. I love getting that Cruel Lab. The half team to not care about pressing the flask while mapping, and this is just going to be the majority of content. The majority of the time you're playing, you're not going to have to really worry about your, your your life bar at all. It just feels so clean, so good. Cool lab, I just love having it. Now, the thing we are progressing towards um, currently on our passive tree is getting these aura reservation clusters, which should allow us to make this character feel much um what's the word much more cozy much more cozy it's, it's, we should be able to get this to a point where it feels a lot a lot cozier a lot safer um because we're going to be getting determination and um purity of elements i ended up deciding i don't the end game of this character once we get a decent way into maps is not going to be purity of elements but initially Initially, when um, we don't have things like the Pantheons, like, for example, oh, I don't even have the Pantheon yet, I don't think. But the one up here, uh, I believe Garukum gives a 60% reduced shock effect. That basically nullifies most shocks from being deadly to us, so to speak. And something like that is going to be really valuable for mitigating shock. But we're not going to get that until we go and we fight the dig map boss and we get the the bonus etc etc same thing with brian king cannot be frozen these are things we cannot have access to yet on the character so i decided you know what it'll make more sense to start out with purity of elements start out with ailment immunity and then by the time we get to those uh pantheons we can then fix those ailment immunities fix those issues so to speak so i will see you guys in a bit normally I would say in terms of league starting, I would chill out in Blood Aqueducts to like 65 or something. I would I would run some Blood Aqueducts, I'd farm some humility cards, I'd sell them for some chaos, and then I would start getting things like a Pyre Ring, things like a Death's Rush. Those are going to make our damage better, our clear way better, give us some chaos rise, that feels good. I'd get something like an Ambu's Charge 5 link, I think those will exist and they'll be cheap. 
I would look at upgrading my rares here. I would look at getting a, a Rise of the Phoenix. All these things will make the Righteous Fire character feel so clean for basically white and probably into high yellows with just that initial gear. So I would chill here for a little bit and I'd run it, but since it's getting kind of late and I do want to finish this video uh, and get it posted for you guys, I am just going to run through and I'm probably going to finish Axe a little bit lower level than I normally would. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll just basically showcase the fact that you can chill in here, you can run Blood Aqueducts, it's pretty smooth, it's just a matter of shield charging around and flame dashing, you know, just moving around, getting the kills, and you can run Blood Aqueducts and get XP, but I myself am just going to go straight for the end game so I can show you, hey guys, I still had kind of potato gear the whole time, and even when we got to Katava and we're still on our 3-link Righteous Fire and our 4-link Fire Trap, uh, it still works fine. I just want to showcase it so that, I get, that way you guys can feel comfortable with it and know that, hey, if you put a little bit of time into your gearing here, you're going to end up with a lot, a lot stronger results. And I'm going to even do that on League Launch myself because that's what I'd recommend doing. Uh, but I just wanted to do this showcase based around having completely SSF gear, not even bothering training. I found two Chaos while uh, leveling so far, I think. And so this Chaos could go straight to buying myself some nice upgrades that would make a big difference. And I obviously can't do this because I'm just doing this testing League Start thing, right? So I'll see you in a bit, guys. All right, here we are on our Merciless Lab. This one is going to be where we get one of our strongest nodes in Trickster, 20% more damage over time, some skill effect duration, and reduced damage over time taken. So it uh, not only gives us some nice damage boost, but it also makes our sustain better, which it actually works pretty well with our Akali's. I forgot this got uh, buffed all the way to 10% damage reduction over time. So we'll be taking a total of 20% reduced damage taken from damage over time. With the ascendancy point right here, Good old prolonged pain. Great node. And then our last one will be Swift Killer, which will be an Uber Lab, but I'm not even going to include that in this video because this is just going through the entire axe. So, did that. Let's go ahead and go do Kataba. Now, I am definitely like speed rushing the end game, uh, the end of the campaign or whatever. I personally wouldn't recommend doing this. Like I said before, I would go through. <laughs> I'd go through the act, or I'd go through Blood Aqueducts, I'd grind it out there and update my gear, and that's what I'm going to do on League Launch, but I just wanted to finish out this run to Act 10 through Katava to show you guys uh, just what it looks like if you were going through with completely scuffed gear and all you ever got was a 3-link Righteous Fire and 4-link Fire Trap, you know, just to give you an idea like, hey, it clearly still works even in these uh, circumstances, right? Um, but ultimately, you should very easily be able to get well beyond this gear in a very significant way uh, based on just the, the easy pickups that are going to be cheap. Pyre's always pretty cheap. It's a very common, unique stuff like uh, Death's Rush will make you feel so much better for clear getting an onslaught. Very nice to get 20% movement speed and attack speed. That just helps with uh, just going through the, uh, the zones. I should say uh, we got some of those aura, aura reservation passives. Um, so now in our character, the ones out here, we can now fit in uh, Determination and Purity of Elements and Defiance Banner. I ended up dropping Purity of Fire and Skitterbots to make this happen. Currently with Purity of Fire, you don't get that much max res until it's like level 17 is when you hit 3 max res and like 20 when you hit 4 max res or something like that. So it really isn't that that like important to run with purity of fire until you get the higher max res from it and I, I was thinking in the time being while we're trying to get our ailments fixed by getting the brian king passive for cannot be frozen and the reduced effect to chill and that stuff while we're running with purity of elements we'll be leveling up the purity of fire that way by the end of um getting those things purity of fire will be leveled to a decent extent where it's actually giving us a good amount of max res and once we get those uh, Pantheons, we can then swap over to Purity of Fire from Purity of Elements, pick up some nice boost in max res, and we're, we're having a good time with it, right? But for the time being, I felt it was more important to get ailment immunity and to get armor into the build, just because physical damage reduction basically just means your character isn't getting stun locked all the time. Fizz hits are very common, and just with Determination Defiance Banner, and we're going to get a little bit more percent armor on the tree. We're going to get gear with some armor on it. We start to feel very cozy in terms of fizz hits. We don't get stunned all the time. And I think that'll just lead to a better feeling build overall. So, anyways, let's get in. Let's get, do this Katava. And then we will uh, 
I guess we'll end the video there, you know. Hopefully this gave you guys a a decent idea of what leveling with Righteous Fire looks like for a Shadow for a Trickster. Ultimately, a lot of the stuff I'm doing here is very applicable to leveling with an Inquisitor. Your sustain will just be... It'll be strictly better, I would say, just because of how good Pious Path is. I think when Trickster is going to take off, when it has the potential, is definitely in the later game setup when we get to energy shield um, based. But while you're mapping, I think they're pretty comparable just because the damage over time recovery rate is such a huge multiplier. At that, they're they're comparable, but uh, bossing, no, no. It's definitely Inquisitor, right? But we'll be plenty fine with our sustain to do bossing with the life-based Trickster. It shouldn't be a problem at all. All right, let's go ahead and finish up this Katava. I haven't been paying a great attention to what I'm doing, but uh, hopefully we're killing him well enough is the goal. Hopefully I've been somewhat coherent in describing how all these things work together in leveling this character. I feel like I've been scratchy voice most of the time because I've been I've been sore throat and a little bit sick today. I'm hoping by league start I'm feeling a lot better. I would like to do a couple days of streaming before league start. Um, so I might be doing that come Wednesday and Thursday, the two days before league launch. Tomorrow I'm going to... Oh, crap. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking through too many things. Tomorrow I'm going to be working again and then that'll be probably the last day... I remember right? Yeah, that'll be the last day before before uh, I am taking off work to focus on some PoE content for at least two weeks into the league launch is what I'd like to do. Um, so Katava, he's finished now. Now we just got to do, oh, what's it called? This, the heart phase or whatever it is. Uh, a little bit scuffed that I died to that one attack. I wasn't really watching what was going on. Currently, I am level 63. I'm way under leveled, and uh, a lot of the passes we're about to get are heavy life nodes, which will help us a lot. And then, obviously, getting gear that isn't this bad will will be big as well. So, anyways, this is what the character looks like while leveling. Um, just for the record, last time I did slash deaths, it was eight times. So I didn't die at all since then, but then I just died to that because I wasn't really paying attention. I was trying to talk to you guys. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it gave you a good idea on what to do on e at each point. I will be including this uh, newly updated path, path of building, which basically goes over the steps I would recommend taking at each point. And moral of the story is, once we get to Act 4, we're pretty much done updating our gem links for the most part. It, it's a matter of what what gear you can acquire with what four links and what color gem sockets and stuff. But for me and my character, I wasn't really like trying too hard to gear and get gem links correct. So I, had a, I have a pretty scuffed setup here, which is just Righteous Fire, Link to Ellie Focus, Link to Burn Damage. And then I have Combustion, Fire Trap, Efficacy, and Control Destruction. This is not your end game, like, this isn't, this isn't the best link setup. Obviously, Trap and Mind Damage is much better than something like Combustion. Combustion, I would rather have on a support skill, like a Wave of Conviction for inflicting exposure and getting the Ignite. Stuff like that is definitely something I will be doing, but my gem link colors were all over the place. I didn't really want to micromanage it. I was being kind of lazy. But needless to say, even if you are kind of lazy with your links and you just have, like, a Shield Charge, a Flame Dash, a couple gem links for some auras... And then you have a four and a three link. You're going to be plenty fine for doing the early content. Um, so hopefully that explains that stuff well. And then here I will be finishing out the rest of this POB notes. Basically just talking about the fact that, hey, from Act 6 to 7, you're just basically cruising. You're just identifying rare gear and you're looking at which one has the bigger life number and you're switching it. Or you're looking at which gear fixes your resistances and you're switching it. And then you just do that all the way through till Cruel Lab. And then you do it again all the way till Merc Lab. And then you just run some blood aqueducts. You re you buy some of the gear recommended in this earlier section here. Early pieces to look for for gearing an RF character. It's pretty simple stuff. And then on league launch, every day at the end of the day, I'll say, this is where I got to. This is the gear I prioritize getting. And you can follow along that way as well. Anyways, as always, take care, exiles.